Story at the uh, podium. Mike, uh, last season in this series against Denver, late game offense was an, a problem for you guys. What enabled you guys to, to really execute down the stretch of this one yeah. tonight? Yeah, for sure. And that's the thing we talked about coming in this series. Um, the one thing about the Denver Nuggets, we talked Phoenix, it was kind of the, their starts, and that was the emphasis, was get off to good starts. We were able to win each of the first quarter. And what we talked about coming in the Denver series is we have outscored them all four games basically plus minus the first three quarters and they had done a very good job of outscoring us in the four start of games to closing games and just talking about just taking care of the basketball making sure we get good shots I think the one turnover we had when late Mike was trying to get the ball to Ant but other than that I thought we were very very composed you know obviously guys getting to their spots they either had to make a decision to put two on Ant he was finding the right guy or play him one-on-one -on -one. and again he was attacking downhill you just feel like you're finding the right balance. You have so much like diversity you can go to late in the games. It seems like, like there's a Mike Rudy pick and roll just kind of mixing it up every now and then so it's not just one thing that the defense can prep for. Absolutely, um, for sure. I think when, uh, when you look with, I mean, you have a plethora of options as far as the Mike and Rudy combo, pick and roll, obviously Ant with whomever, and then you still have uh, Carl Anthony Towns who in his own right. And then what they have to decide again is, are they going to put two on the ball, which usually, if we get off of it in the correct manner, leads to an open shot, or they're playing guys straight up. And as long as we play attacking downhill, it's either at the rim or a foul. Now, it was a rough first half, and then he really picked it up in the fourth specifically. If he is able to get on a roll here, how important is that specifically in this matchup where such a big part of it? Yeah, very much so. I think, um, and it was great at halftime. I think, um, you know, the bench had six of our eight turnovers. Finchie did a great job of challenging the bench in the second half. I felt that they all responded. We felt that they responded, especially Nas. I think uh, he only missed the one shot in the second half, but absolutely. The more that Nas gets going, that makes that three-man rotation, what we're doing at that four or five, very harmonious, if you will, because even Cat got in a little bit of foul trouble. We were able to go ahead and, and get Rudy and Nas in there and even get Rudy out when Nas is playing that well and rest him at times too, for sure. Micah, there's been some build-up to this series by virtue of both you guys and the Nuggets closing out your first-round opponent. You come into the defending champs building, have an 18-4 to lead, and, and I think Ant was 5-for-5. Five five. Just what did that initial thrust kind of do for the group in terms of establishing who you're going to be uh, in this series? Yeah, I think that obviously the, the starting group came out ready to play. We go up 18-4. to four. Went to our bench, and then, again, that's what Finchie led to him, him challenging them at halftime because we get up 18-4. to 4, They are the defending champs. The one thing that does do is they have to – I mean, they made a lot of shots. There wasn't a lot of resistance. But at the end of the day, when you build that big of lead, it, they have to – a lot of energy to get back in the game and their bench Reggie Jackson came in did a phenomenal job and um, and Watson and even Holiday who didn't play much in the last series came in so you could credit their bench and then just going back to what these guys were talking about earlier the response and the maturity of our group and I think you see the difference in the growth from last year where they made their run okay they end up shoot they were they were leading at the end of the first uh, quarter. So I think they go on a 21-5 to five run to end that quarter. But just the resiliency of our group to come back, even guard, even though we weren't making shots in the second quarter, but to hold them to 19 points and keep it close. And then in the second half, our bench really responded. And Anthony obviously did a very good job. Mike, uh, defensively, you threw a couple different looks at Jamal Murray and Nicole Could You start with Ant on him. You go to, go to Jaden. And obviously, like you said, with the bigs, a lot of different looks there on Jokic. How, how did that help you guys defensively? No, I think a, a lot. And I think what we're, what we're trying to say is, you know, Jamal Murray, who is a, again, he is an all-star, one of the top players in the league. And so a lot of times we just talk about deciding whether or not we go over and under a chase. But we just want to be as physical as we could with him, knowing that we have Nikhil, we have Jaden, we have Ant, we can Monte, we can throw a lot of bodies at him and try to wear him down. And that's the same thing we try to do with Nicola, whether it's Rudy guarding him at times, Nas, even Kyle and Kat and all that. But to your point, we are blessed with, with three guys who can really defend on the perimeter. And then when Jamal has to work as much as he does, hopefully down the stretch of games, that takes a uh, toll on them. Micah, in the beginning of the second half, I mean, it looked like it was a point of emphasis to go to Carl in that he had like 11 
points in that third third quarter. How did you find his response in that second half after the first half, and, and what were you able to get out of him in those early minutes in that third quarter? Yeah, I think a lot of credit goes to Carl. I think he missed 13 games down the stretch, played the last two regular season games, did a great job of making sure that he was in shape when he came back. And I think the other difference, too, that – aside from last year when he missed 50 some odd games he got in fit right in found his rhythm and then they switch a lot with that second unit and obviously carl when you switch on to carl and you play him straight up in the same way when he plays in attack mode we can't emphasize that enough getting downhill just using his size to get to the rim but uh, made a point of emphasis versus their switching to try to make sure number one we keep it moving but also to find carl in those mismatch situations Nas and uh, Ant have worked well in blended lineups all year. Um, when you needed offense, isn't that one of the logical ways you get it because of the spacing and the shooting? Absolutely. Um, I think that's the one thing that Nas does do. And that's the, you know, everybody talks about us playing big and, and obviously we are, but Carl Anthony Towns and Nas Reed are both essentially 40% three point shooters. So even if those guys were the three, you still, the, the gravity of which that they pull, and then it's really difficult for them to not stay hugged up. So then when they get into gaps, that's where you see Anthony and Mike making the right play for those kickouts. And then when Nas steps up and knocks it down like that, and obviously we know Carl knocks him down as well. That is huge for us because it allows us to play big on the defensive end, but the gravity of which they pull and the ability of them to shoot the basketball really helps us. Coach, obviously, Ant had the big night, but it just seemed like he played with a lot of poise and aggression, I guess, that balance, especially in the fourth quarter. Is this something that you, I guess you can see, he's been building up to this year to play in this type of environment against this particular opponent? Yeah, for sure. I think that you can't, um, the fact that we were able to get into the playoffs the last two years and, and it, the, to be able to win those play-in games so that you get to play in series, the Memphis series, obviously, and then getting to play these guys. There's a familiarity from last year. He obviously has played well in the playoffs, so that gives him some confidence. But I think the more you play in the playoffs and, and the more experience that you get, things start to slow down, and then he can see what people are trying to do to him. And the other thing I will say that's a credit to, uh, to Ant more so is he's always had the ability, but now he's trusting teammates. And I don't, you know, I know that sounds cliche, but at the end of the day, he's willing to get off of it and then get it back and attack and find his spots and then obviously see the maturity of the down the fourth quarter of the stretch that he did. Micah, everyone got to see Ant's kind of leadership on full display in the Phoenix series. Was he saying anything at halftime when he's got 25 a year, 40 points, and he's got it going, but just trying to get the rest of the rest of his teammates going? Was he saying anything in the locker room there? Absolutely. He, I mean, he, and I know you guys have seen all of his interviews. He's always, again, everybody's like, hey, you got 45, and the first thing he'll talk about is Jaden getting three stops on um, Porter Jr. or Nas's big second half, but absolutely. So he's become more vocal. Obviously, you have some great vets on our team with Cat, with Rudy, with Mike with Kyle that do the most of the, of the talking. However, when Ant speaks, they all listen for sure and they know that he's all in and just all he is is positive. Nas, keep shooting. Nikhil, we need you. So absolutely, he's been more focal and it's, uh, I think it's shown. It gives those guys confidence as well. It wasn't the ideal situation there, but could that was, was that almost as seamless as it could go with you and Finch? I mean, it seemed like you, everything just went well. I mean, I know it wasn't ideal or anything, but it seemed like you communicated well. Everything just went kind of smoothly. Yeah, for sure. I mean, all the plays that we scored on were my calls, and the ones we didn't were his. No, I'm joking. But, yeah, it went well. And I think the one thing about um, Finchy is, you know, he, even though he's up a lot during games, he's not calling a lot of plays. I mean, he really isn't. I mean, there's dead balls and things like that, side out of bounds, after some makes and timeouts where he'll just kind of tell me things to look for but he was great he's like I don't we don't want to make it clunky is the term that he used and I think that we did a good job of that and things are awful awful easy when you have Mike Conley out there to settle things down Kyle Anderson and those guys so it did move I thought that it, it went well for sure and in, in a not ideal situation obviously but um, uh, for sure I think that it went as smooth as it possibly could have this was probably, I mean, obviously Phoenix made little mini runs, but this is the most adversity you faced this postseason. Loud atmosphere and everything. Is that when you can count on Mike the most? Is that when you can lean on him the most, knowing that he's going to do whatever kind of has to be done? Absolutely. Um, I mean, they call him Captain Clutch, all that type of thing, but just the calming presence that he has, even when they were going on those runs, I think even after the turnover when he was trying to get the ball to Ant, you know, they hit the 1-3 and all that, but in the timeouts, he's just like, hey, we're fine. Make sure we just continue to get good shots, take care of it, and that type of thing. But the calming presence that Mike Conley has, and obviously, you know, the big three that he made earlier in the half kind of got us going a little bit versus the under and that type of thing, but you can't understate the, what Mike Conley brings to this team from a calming presence.
Ant shooting in the mid-range this year, maybe as opposed to others. Do you guys have more confidence in that shot? Does he have more confidence in that shot? Because uh, it seemed like, you know, years of work kind of came into maybe a moment like this where he hits a couple of those late. I think it would be more our confidence. I don't think that Anthony Edwards has ever lacked for any type of confidence in his mid-range shot, but um, he's making them. The thing is, too, you know, everybody talks about at the rim or the three ball and, and points per game and the efficiency, but and, and Finchie's even told him that. I mean, when his feet are underneath him and they're down and he, and he sets it, I mean, he's making that shot at a high rate, but absolutely his confidence in taking that shot and any shot from that matter is at an all-time high. Rudy's play in the fourth where he seemed to, like, bait Nicola into the lob and then tip it away. I mean, when you have such a high Q offensive team, how much of a weapon is it to have a high IQ defensive player to maybe snuff some of that stuff out? Absolutely. And I think that um, when it gets down the stretch, you talk about how good Denver is down the stretch, it becomes a possession game. So, and I think that was a, maybe there was six points or a four point game. And when you're able to get that stop and then extend it to eight, now it becomes a three possession game. That is huge. Whereas opposed to, and we've talked about it. I mean, the Nicola to Aaron Gordon lob, I think is number one in the NBA or therefore. So, and Rudy's as good as they're coming comes in the NBA as far as that playing to that cat and mouse and then just his length and he made one heck of a deflection and able to corral the ball and get the 50-50 ball was great and the fact that a credit to Jaden to Rudy and all those guys only three offensive rebounds for the Denver Nuggets was big for us tonight.